At this point, it's worth going back and visiting the basic concept of passing arguments around into functions. We talked about mutability uh, and aliasing last class, and it, or in the last video, and it turns out that it's that is highly relevant to the topic of passing values around. So, if we just write our standard little function square that takes x, which is a double, and gives back x times x, we can ask, what does this look like in memory when I say square, here, in fact, let's go ahead and let's use a val just to, to be clear about this. So val a equals six square of six. Well, so the picture of a equals six is something like this. So we have our variable a and it references a box that has the value 6 inside of it something like this okay so that's the picture that that we have and then we have our function square now inside of square, square has another variable, the argument, the parameter, that is declared, and that is x. And so inside of the function, we have an x. But it turns out that when we call it, x winds up referencing the thing that the argument had passed to. So basically, inside of this function, x becomes an alias for 6, and for the 6 that a references here. So this is the way to think of what happens with normal argument passing. Why is this significant? Well, when we talked about aliasing, we created a, an array arr, and then we set val b equals arr to make an alias. And you might have felt like, well, this is silly. I would never actually do this. Or when I did this, I would know that I was making an alias, and so I wouldn't mess anything up. However, this passing an argument into a function is making an alias. So instead of having a be the simple integer or uh, value 6 here, what if a instead was a reference to an array. Well, then we have a picture that's something like this. And now if we had a function that takes that array, and in fact, we have done exactly this. We have had functions like fill array, where we passed in an array and an index, and actually let's call this zero array so I don't have to pass anything else in. And what I want to do is this function is going to go through and set every value in this array to be zero. So if, let's go ahead and put some curly braces, if i is less than a dot length, then I'm going to set a sub i to 0 and call 0 array on i plus on a and i plus 1. And if I have an array like arr, except, yeah, I can say 0 array of arr, I need an extra o in there, and 0. And now arr is all zeros. How did that work? Well, it worked because this function zero array has is getting an alias for the outside array. So the picture in this case is our outside variable is called arr. Inside of the function, 
we had this variable called a, but when we call it, and we also had an i, so technically there's an a, and an i, but the i isn't all that interesting to us. The a points to there, and the i, at least when we call it the first time, it points to an integer that was originally zero. Okay, and then we check if i is less than the length, which it is, and then we store a zero in a, but a is just an alias for arr, so we actually store a zero in that array, and then we recursively call with i plus one, in which case we technically make another a, it's not the same one, because with these recursive functions you're always getting a new one with, with every call. So we get another a that's also an alias for this. And the next call makes another a that's also an alias for this. So in these recursive calls, you might not think about it, but you're making lots of aliases for the things that you're passing in. And that means that things like this array have effectively lots of different names that are referring to them. That allows us to mutate the array, and when that's the desired effect, it's a great thing to have. But you do need to realize that anytime you pass an array into a function in Scala, that function can mess with your array. And so you, that is one of the things that you kind of have to be careful about.